All right, so this video we're going to look at finding the exact value of a trig function using half angle identity. And you can see here, here's the formulas for the half angle identities. Uh, half angle identity for sine, cosine, and notice here there's two of them for tangent. There's actually another one for tangent. It's uh, tangent a over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a over 1 plus cosine a. Uh, which one do you use of the tangent side? It really doesn't matter. You can use any of them. They'll all give you the correct answer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And, and notice the, uh, the sine and the cosine and this tangent down here has plus or minus there. You've got to decide if it's going to be plus or minus when you're evaluating these things. So first example, let's look at cosine of 15 degrees. We want to find the exact value. Well, we don't know the cosine of 15 degrees, but what you should know is you should know the sine, cosine, and tangent of the special angles like 30, 45, and 60 degrees. 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360, and 0. You should know those. And when you're taking trig, those are the ones you should memorize. Okay? So we do know the cosine of 30. Alright, so let's just go ahead and write the formula here. Cosine of A over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine a over 2. So that's the half angle identity for cosine. So when we work this, okay, we're looking for the cosine of 15 degrees. Well, we don't know 15 degrees. So what we can do is we can say the cosine of 15 degrees is equal to the cosine of 30 degrees over 2. Okay, well 30 over 2 is what? 15. That's 15 here. And you can see now this 30 over 2 is now in the form of A over 2. And in this case A is 30 degrees. So all I have to do now is plug the 30 degrees in here. Alright, so let's work it. So this is going to be Alright, well let's just go ahead and put square root of 1 plus cosine of A, and in this case A is 30 degrees, so that's cosine 30 degrees over 2. Alright, now notice it's plus or minus, okay? Well, 15 degrees is where? It's in the first quadrant, and, do, and you remember all students take calculus. Okay, so all the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. So we know the cosine of 15 degrees is positive. So we won't use the negative, we'll just do the positive. Okay, and you know if there's not a sign in front, it's assumed to be positive. Okay, now let's get ready to simplify this thing. Alright, so we've got the square root of 1 plus cosine 30. Well, what's the cosine of 30? That's one you have to remember. That's the square root of 3 over 2. And that's all over 2. Okay. Now we need to simplify this. Okay. Alright, so if you look at this, you can see that this is just, just look at the part inside the radical. That's just a complex fraction. See, we can look at that as 1 over 1, we can look at that as 2 over 1. So the way that we get, the way that we simplify this is we have the square root, alright, so look at this denominator, this denominator, and this denominator. We're going to multiply each term here by the common denominator, which in this case is 2. Okay, so I've got 2 times 1 plus 2 times square root of 3 over 2 over 2 times 2. And that's going to give me the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over 4. Okay, 
and then this can be simplified some more so that's going to be square root I'm sorry let's see that's going to be square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over square root of 4 remember you can split the radical up like that okay so that's going to be square root of 2 2 plus square root of 3 over and then the square root of 4 is 2 and this would be your solution okay all right so now let's take a look at the next one all right so I got it erased so now let's look at the sine of 67.5 degrees well we don't know the sine of 67.5 degrees so I'm gonna see if I can use a half angle identity here well I see that the sine of 67.5 degrees that would be the same thing as the sine of well let's look at this 135 over 2 okay 135 over 2 is 67.5 now you may wonder well 135 you said we need to memorize 30 45 and 60 okay well we've got the 135 this is where reference angles comes in okay so let's write the let's write the formula here for sine of a over 2 that's equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a over 2 all right so let's let's plug this in so that's going to be the square root of 1 minus sine of 135 over 2 Okay. Now, we need to figure out what is the sine of 135 degrees. All right. So, if we come over here, we know 135 is over here in the second quadrant. Okay. Well, what I need to do is find my reference angle. And I'm going to use theta with a subscript r to represent the reference angle. Uh, depending on what book you use, they all use a different notation. The, I've seen this before. I've seen this. I've seen this used as, to represent a reference angle. You know, just whatever your book does, that's fine. Well, let's go ahead and get the reference angle. So the reference angle, remember, it's always measured off the second quadrant. And I do have a video on reference angles if you need to check that out. Well, this angle here is going to be what? 180 degrees minus this 135 which that is going to give me 45 degrees okay so now we can we can use this the fact that we know the 45 degrees so that's going to be the square root of 1 minus alright now the sine of 135 well What's the sine of 45? The sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Now, I'm in the second quadrant. Is sine positive or negative in the second quadrant? Well, it's positive in the second quadrant, so this stays positive. See, it's 1 minus a positive square root of 2. Now, let's just, for instance, let's say that the angle was here in the third quadrant and this 45 was here and we were using that as our reference angle I would say the sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2 but then I would have to say it's negative square root of 2 over 2 because the angles in the third quadrant but since our angles in the second quadrant it stays positive okay if it was in the third quadrant here it would look like this I would have to write it like that okay all right, so let's get all that off here. All right, and then that's over two. And then we'll simplify this the same way we did the other one. Well, we're gonna multiply each term by the common denominator, which is two. This is just a complex fraction. So that's two times one minus two times, whoop, two times square root of two over two over two times two. And so 
this is going to give me 2 minus square root of 2 over 4. And then we can split this up again, just like we did the last one. Okay. And so this is square root of 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. And this would be your answer. Okay. All right. So now let's check the next one. Let's try tangent 22.5. All right. So now let's get tangent 22.5. Well, we don't know the tangent of 22.5, but we can say the tangent of 22.5 is equal to the tangent of, well, let's see, we know what, 34, I mean, I'm sorry, 30, 45, 60. Oh, well, look at this. 45 over 2 is 22.5. So there's your half angle identity. All right, now, which one do we use? Well, remember there was three of them there. We can just pick one. Let's just use this one. Let's just use tangent A over 2 is equal to sine A over 1 plus cosine A. All right? It doesn't matter which one you use. I just chose this one. Okay? All right. So you can see... You can see that in this case, A is 45 degrees. So we're going to plug the 45 degrees in. So that's going to be sine of 45 degrees over 1 plus cosine 45 degrees. All right. All right. So let's see. The sine of 45, that's what? Square root of 2 over 2 over 1 plus cosine of 45. That's square root of 2 over 2. And once again, we have a complex fraction. We can look at that as 1 over 1. So we look at all of our denominators here. The common denominator is 2. So we're going to multiply each term by the common denominator. So I got 2 times square root of 2 over 2 over 2 times 1 plus 2 times square root of 2 over 2. And so this is going to give me square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2. All right. Now, you might think you're finished, okay? Depending on your teacher, you might be finished. But some of you, your teacher might want you to rationalize the denominator. So we need to multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate. So that's 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2. Multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. All right. So here I'm going to distribute the square root of 2. So that's 2 square root of 2 minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 over. Now remember, this is just what? a plus b times a minus b which is a squared minus b squared. Okay, So 2 squared is 4 minus square root of 2 squared. Well, let's see. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. And so that's 2 square root of 2 minus 2 over 4 minus 2, which is 2. And then look at this. The 2's cancel. And so I am left with square root of 2 minus one. And there's your final answer. All right, so I know this video was kind of long, but hope it helped. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.